ranking Australian states in terms of investment. You're going to be doing the, uh, the, the TikTok trend and doing the kind of tier rating on states across the country. So first, we're going to go through our categories. So we've got trending upwards. These are areas that potentially they're not going through the you know, big growth cycle right now, but we're seeing some promising signs. Secondly, we've got our investment grades. So they may have already shown some signs or, or they're on the precipice to go, go forward. Mid-tier at okay, that's what we're okay to invest our money. Then we've got our thanks, but no thanks, maybe a little bit on the nose. Maybe we're anticipating that market to pull back. And then we've got our note category, which is just where we don't want to be investing our money, maybe for bias reasons, maybe just for the data side of things. And uh, just to, if you're new watching the video for the first time or not familiar with Bright House, I guess here we're really data-based and data-led property investors. So what we look for in terms of our investing algorithm, it's our algorithm that's been in place now for, for over 13 years and has been tried and tested model. And what we look for in the algorithm is we are looking for areas that are going to have strong performance in their first five years of their cycle. So when we're going through these states, we're not saying whether we'd like to live there or what we think of them in a personal basis. We're going to, towards in terms of what we think from an investment perspective. So why don't we go through that? kind of line by line and what we might do to start with we'll probably go with uh let's start with metro wa so that's probably one of the, the most talked about areas across the country at the moment and has been for the last couple of years and in general metro wa has seen phenomenal capital growth and phenomenal rental growth and it's still you know presenting some opportunities in there what i will say for wa Though there is still growth happening in that area, you have to be very, very selective in where you're buying and when you're negotiating on properties in there. And I mean, for us, even here as a professional buyers agency, you know, our conversion rates on buying properties in those markets at the moment are really low. We could even argue that potentially we're wasting our time a little bit in terms of resources that requires to get a successful purchase for a client. So there, but there are still some opportunities in there. But what I would say kind of medium to longer term metro wa is still investment grade to me so we're still seeing very 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 tight demand you know rental growth still happening and it's something that i do anticipate to slow down a little bit but if if there's a slowdown on on a 22 percent capital growth rate for a year and we're still in double digit territory uh still something that's really strong so we're going to put that one in the investment grade category then we're going to go down to, where will we go down to next? We're going to go down to Metro New South Wales. So Metro New South Wales, we're talking kind of within an hour commute of the CBD. And that one for me, I'm, I guess, you know, Sydney has recovered a little bit from when it went through the biggest correction in comparison to other states from that post-COVID boom when the interest rates went higher. They had the biggest pullback, but they also bounced back pretty strongly. Um, but you do expect that to happen in your more expensive markets because what you see there is typically if you've got your multi-million dollar properties, firstly, in your multi-million dollar properties, there's only a certain amount of buyers that can afford to buy those properties. So as interest rates start to rise, your buying pool starts to shrink a little bit. So naturally, they pull back a little bit and you need consumer confidence to come back because demand is still always going to be there for some of those premium locations. But I would put metro new south wales in an okay category um i was very tempted to put it towards the trending upwards category the only reason i put that in the okay category is just purely because in new south wales the yields are quite weak so as an investor i'm fine with negative gearing what i'm probably not fine with though is holding properties that are going to give me two to three and a half percent rental yields when interest rates are at six and a half percent. So for me, that's sitting in the RPOK category for now. Then we're going to go to, where will we go to next from here? Let's go to Metro Queensland. So Metro Queensland, now we've, we're seeing, uh, again, a lot of interest. You, you, you talk to anybody about Queensland there fantastic infrastructure projects from Sunshine Coast down to Gold Coast. A lot of economic spend happening in that part of the country, probably one of the strongest in terms of any other parts of the country. Um, any Victorian, you know, we love to get up, get away from there, in terms, especially this time of year because it's freezing down in Victoria or Tassie, wherever we are. But um, they're looking really strong still in Metro Queensland. They have gone through a significant 
cycle of growth. When I'm talking Metro Queensland, probably that the stronger stronger markets are looking in probably three key areas. We're either looking in that Gold Coast region. You do need to be very careful in Gold Coast because there is going to be a huge influx of apartments coming through in that Gold Coast market. And we've seen it happen in Sydney. We've seen it happen in Melbourne where this influx of apartment stock means your rental pricing is going to get hit a bit of a cap because all this extra rental stock essentially slows down the rental market in that, in those areas. And it's no surprise that we've only really seen about a 6.5% rental growth in the Queensland metro market. So for me, it is still investment grade, but don't expect the rental growth to be as strong as some other markets. So it's still a yes to me. We're going to put that in investment grade. Next one, we're going to go to, let's have a look here. I want to go down to ACT. So ACT has been one that surprisingly has seen 17% capital growth this year. Now, just as a general rule here at Ripe House, we don't purchase in ACT. If you're unfamiliar with some of the uh, the rules and differences there in ACT, you actually never really own the land. You've got a 99 year lease, which you can keep renewing. Um, for us as investors, a lot of time investors have told that they're control freaks and we definitely are so for us um it's a thanks but no thanks and also particularly in that canberra market very 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 low yields for what we want to see so we're going to put act in the uh, thanks but no thanks category then we've got regional queensland so we're going to go back into queensland regional queensland has seen some phenomenal growth particularly from you know those that far north queensland area hands townsville uh, then you're coming down to Mackay, Rockhampton, Gladstone, Bundaberg, Toowoomba. There's been a few of those markets where we've been investing or we continue to invest in, in a few of those markets. Um, obviously not where the cyclones are. So for me, the thing I'm trying to, what you're seeing in the Queensland market in some of those locations, you are starting to see that rental yield squeeze where you've had really fast capital growth. The rents are increasing, but not at the same pace that you're seeing as the as the, uh, the the capital growth is so we're seeing the yields come down and though there's still fantastic in investment opportunities there um you're going to start to get some investors that are maybe starting to not be as enthused in some of these markets because if they're not getting their five and a half six percent yields which they were maybe 12 to 24 months ago um if they're seeing you know low fives, they're probably going to be asking the question in terms of, do I park my money there or am I feeling more comfortable in some other markets across the country, which may be more well infrastructure, you know, bigger towns, you know, easier or closer to commute to, to major capital cities. Um, and that's just that perception of value thing. So I'm still going to put regional Victoria. I had them kind of tied between investment grade and okay. The only reason I was going to put it in okay was because I feel like those far northern parts of the country have really ran away. And when you factor in the uh, the higher insurance premiums, these would be okay. But I'm going to still put in investment grade for, for this exercise. Then we're going to go into regional South Australia. So we'll go into that market. Um, pretty simple one for me here. I'm not going to spend too much time on it. That's a uh, thanks, but no thanks. A lot of a lot of income kind of tied into mining or other kind of poorly diversified economies in, in regional New South Wales, sorry, New regional South Australia. So for me, that's a no. And tying into that, that same rule really, regional WA is also coming in there as well. Then if we want to get into Metro Victoria, everybody, I think I get asked this several times a week in terms of is Metro Victoria back on the list? Obviously, there's been a lot of negative news regarding land tax issues, etc. Uh, you know, Dan Andrews obviously has moved on now, but um, kind of diverted into a bit of a two-team two uh, two state at the moment. But um, for me, Metro Victoria, what we're seeing there is though undersupply is still an issue and you're seeing fantastic rental growth in Metro Victoria, we still have, just like Sydney, we have that unaffordability happening in that Metro market. So You've got expensive properties that are coming in offering low yields. Where you do see some stronger yields are typically on the far fringes of the Melbourne area and they've got supply issues. So they're going to continue to have lots and lots of new stock um, and they've also got you know lots of new apartments coming through. So for me, 
the data is starting to look better for Metro Victoria. That increase of listings in Metro Victoria with the land tax change really for me is just putting it in the okay category. So we're just going to put that one in the okay, just like it's uh, it's big brother New South Wales or us Victorians might say little brother, but we'll, we'll go, go for Victoria right now. Then we're going to work our way through down to Tasmania. So Tasmania, we've probably got two major cities when we're looking at here when it comes to Tassie. We've got Hobart and we've got Launceston, the two kind of major points. And then there's obviously Devonport as well. But for, for us, you know, Hobart was really trending down and is still kind of starting to correct. It obviously went through a big, big growth cycle. And for those unfamiliar, over the last 20 years, Hobart has been the number one capital growth city across the entire country. I am quite bullish on Tasmania as a whole. I'm not saying that um, the data is, is equally as strong when it comes to Tasmania. There's certain pockets that are stronger than others, but very bullish on Tasmania. We're still seeing what, what Tasmania has always struggled with. It's actually had, just like Adelaide, very small population growth. But they've always struggled with new supply and construction coming through. So you need to understand as an investor, there's a big misconception that population growth is the key to everything. But if sometimes you and the developers are very, very savvy at this, if they know there are certain pockets of a state or an LGA where there is really strong population growth coming through, they are going to double down there because they know that supply is consistently going to be out there. So they're going out, buying up all the freed land, doing all the development projects. So all we really need to see is you know, a, a little bit more spend, diverse economy, and we need to see undersupply and, and continued undersupply. So for me, Tasmania is trending upwards, and that be something in a market where what you can't do in your markets like Metro Queensland and Metro WA a win in those markets is buying at market value. You know, buying under market value in those locations right now, it's it's just something that's not happening. You've got anywhere from 15 to 30 plus offers going through in, in most properties. So for me, trending upwards for Tasmania. And yeah, you know, got the football team, really, really big project going to be coming through for, uh, for Tasmania as well. And I'm not, not sure us mainlanders really have a good understanding how big of a deal it might sound silly, just a game of football, having a big deal on an economy, but you're going to have thousands of people in a few years' time going down to the state every second weekend, and they're going to be going to the restaurants, they're going to be going to the hotels, they're going to hire cars, stay for the weekend, go check out the, the magnificent landscape that you get here in, in uh, Tasmania. Winery, seafood, it has a lot to offer. A lot of Australians in the mainland would have never stepped foot in Tasmania. And you're going to come here as well, and they're going to see how affordable it is. And they're going to be interested to potentially have a bit of a sea change and move down. So for me, Tasmania is trending upwards, and it's something that I'll definitely be keeping an eye on as well. Now, we're going to go down to Metro South Australia. So again, another one that's not really a surprise here. Seen a lot of growth for a period of time. Now, Metro South Australia for me is that there's little bits of pockets in and around the state that still offer opportunities as a buy. And there's others that I feel, you know, they're going to be starting to slow down because again, it's about that perception of value. What you don't see in Metro South Australia is really strong yield. So most of the yields in South Australia are around that kind of four to four and a half percent number. Under quoting in South Australia, I would probably say it's one of the worst parts of the country at the moment in this South Australia when it comes to under quoting. So um, there, it's really a line ball decision here for myself, whether it's investment grade or okay. I will say there are some pockets that, from a buying perspective, definitely investment grade. But for the sake of this exercise, we're just going to make a generalized statement. And obviously, we want to have maybe some even distribution. So we're going to put that in the okay category for now. Then we're going to move down to regional New South Wales and regional yeah. Victoria. And we'll go with regional New South Wales at first. So they've seen some growth, but they've actually kind of gone dormant for the last few years. But what we're seeing in regional New South Wales is we're starting to see a little bit of rental uplift. Now, maybe not quite as strong as some other markets and regional New South Wales versus regional Victoria is a bit more expensive. So when I'm talking about regional New South Wales, I'm probably seeing a lot more areas 
kind of at a baseline starting at a $500,000 level and going up to that kind of seven seven fifty dollars price point. So a little <laughs> bit more expensive than, than regional Victoria. But we the data coming through there is pretty strong. It's not at the... It's just on the precipice of investment grade and trending upwards. The data is probably more towards trending upwards, so we're going to put it in that category for today. Then we're going down to Northern Territory. Poor, poor old Northern Territory doesn't really uh, get the uh, the love maybe that it does deserve. Now, for us here at Ripe House, we have two states we just don't buy in as a blanket rule. And unfortunately, Northern Territory falls in that, that area. Uh, just for, for, I guess, from a uh, fundamental side of things, we don't really see the, I guess, private investment and, you know, building into businesses and, you know, capitalist kind of economy that we like to see a lot of government-based jobs. But unfortunately, a lot of those government-based jobs have got kind of fixed wage increases where if you get a booming industry that's privately owned, you know, if, if they're making really, really strong money from those, those returns flow down to the workers, the workers start spending the money the rents start to go up where you do get some okay rental yields in northern territory a lot of it's tied to, to mining with some other um kind of fly in fly out work but um like i mentioned as a general rule uh that's a no for, for us here at right house and uh, in fact i think if that's going to be the rule for northern territory we're going to put act in that category um, in there as well and then lastly let's talk about regional victoria so i guess Obviously, we kind of already addressed it, but regional Victoria, just Victoria as a whole, hasn't had the best sentiment when it comes to investing in terms of investing in the state of Victoria. Uh, for those unfamiliar, introduced a new land tax rule, which essentially made the threshold as soon as you have an investment property in Victoria, you're immediately paying a land tax bill. Now, investors didn't take kindly to this and you know they started to, to sell off their investment properties, particularly those investors who may be hadn't diversified their portfolio and had all of their eggs in the, the one basket in Victoria. And they're walking into five, ten, twenty thousand dollar land tax bills. If all of a sudden you're not getting, you know, strong yields, which you definitely don't get in that metropolitan area, if you've then got this land tax bill added on top, it's not a great way in terms of managing your cash flow, particularly if you've got a mortgage and your interest rates growing on that. So it started to push some people out, but not only is the data looking really, really strong in regional Victoria, in terms of as a sentiment as a whole, the thing I like to just let investors know, the land tax bill in Victoria, you know, if you're just buying the one investment in that in that state, your yearly land tax bill is probably going to be between anywhere from $600 up to about $2,000 per annum while you hold that asset, which people might turn around and say, well, hey, that's a lot. But some of the advantages of having properties in a state like Victoria, you know, your property management fees in Victoria are actually typically lower than what you see in other states. So you're going to see between about a six and a half to an eight percent property management fee, sometimes even lower than that six and a half percent. Whereas if we're buying in Perth, I'm seeing lots of property managers, a different system over there where they may have a base of nine to 12 percent. And then if you want all the inclusive options where they'll actually rock up to do your inspection and they'll you know they'll get a tradie out and do all these things it can be anywhere from 12 to 15 percent in terms of property management fees but if you're comparing it to places like regional or far north queensland your insurance premiums can be two to three times as high you have much more expensive council or water rates or flood levies etc so some of your holding costs in regional victoria are so much lower than other parts of the country that really offset that land tax element so we need to take our biases and just look at the numbers. And then we want to look at the data and then we want to think of market sentiment. So if you're an investor that, you know, you may be purchased in previous locations, either with us or across the country, where maybe you were ahead of the curve, you invested in, in uh, Perth 2020, December, when we started to jump in there, 2021, and you've seen some of your purchases nearly double in value, or you purchased in places like Sunshine Coast in 2019 and they have doubled in value or other parts of the country, uh, maybe even places like far north Queensland, etc., where you've, you've got really, really strong growth. But potentially, I guess what people go through when they, when they come to on the investing side of things is always this perception and value thinking cap that goes through their mind where they've seen their property go through an exponential growth cycle and they're worried that that's going to fall within with under them. So 
know, they might be in a place like, uh, just as an example here, we'll say far north Queensland, they've seen their investment go from 300000 up to $600,000 and they're going, well, hang on, you know, I'm potentially four, five, six hours away from a, a, what we'd call a major CBD and I'm not seeing the rental growth that I quite was once before and I'm seeing some really strong buying opportunities in somewhere like regional Victoria. Not only do I think that that place is undervalued, I'm feeling a lot more confident in terms of it's a larger size town, it's well more well infrastructured, there's more projects coming through, they can get to a capital city by a train or, or by a car within you know one to two hours. That's something that, you know, as an investor from a sentiment side of things, gonna start to be really, really strong. And the other thing to take in mind at the moment is in terms of if we're talking about places like WA or Queensland, you know. Buying under market value in those locations at the moment really is next to non-existent. You know, if you're working, walking away and buying at say at market value, that is a win because most properties in those markets are getting anywhere between ten to thirty offers per per opportunity that opens up. Whereas if in some of these locations in these trending upwards areas, you might be the only person putting an offer through. You might be just less than a handful. And your ability to get vendor discounting, buying under market value is really, really strong. So whilst you might go through an initial quieter period, if we're thinking kind of longer term and the five-year buying cycle on the algorithm, we might have a slower start, but then we come steaming home, you know, over the next four or five years. So for me, I have regional Victoria in trending upwards, and we've got these three locations in absolute buy windows for me. So I'd love to know your thoughts. Please leave a comment below if you have any questions or you know need to speak with an expert from me, myself, or one of the team regarding property investing. Click the link below and more than happy to pick up a call and help you with that. If you're not already, you liked the video today, you'd like to see more, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye for now.